Let's look at um, like on a, on a medical side, things like um, like your IV drips, right? So it's pretty much the IV drips, right? It's it's really it's an it's some kind of an uh, an apparatus that where it's used to administer like blood, uh, medication, or nutrients intravenously, right? So your doctor's got a patient, let's say, hooked up to an IV, and typically IVs need to be what we call isotonic, right? So isotonic IVs usually can be uh, maybe 5% glucose. Uh, and this pretty much 5%, uh, sometimes it's also called the 5% dextrose, right? Uh, or D5W for short. Uh, or sometimes they can be 0.9% um, sodium chloride. And this is what we refer to as an isotonic saline so solution. So the saline meaning that um, there is some kind of a salt in it. And what isotonic means, and this middle example here, and what we have here in, the in, in, in this um, beaker here, we've got um, what we call a solution that is considered isotonic. So the solutions here are isotonic. So what that means is that there is an equal amount right, of solute right, to solvent on both sides. Right? Both sides meaning um, outside, right, in this beaker here, as well as inside. And here what we're going to have here, we're going to label this as a red blood cell. So this red blood cell inside this, what we call a typical isotonic solution, will have an equal amount of solute to solvent ratio between the outside and the inside. But now what happens is, let's just say... Now we go in, in a in a substance that is considered hypotonic, right? So if something is considered a hypotonic solution, it means that the solution has a lower solute concentration, right, than the inside of this red blood cell. So let's uh, take this red blood cell from this state and bring it over here. So we bring the uh, red blood cell in here. And what's gonna happen, actually, let's uh, let's clone this so we can uh, still keep that. So let's put it in here, right? We take that red blood cell, we bring it in here in which this solution here is considered hypotonic. So this has um, less solute out here and in here we've got a lot of solute so i'm going to put it in capital letters so we've got a lot of solute in here what do you think is going to happen and knowing what you know about um uh, osmosis we know that solutes suck so if inside this red blood cell there is more solute than there is outside water is going to rush inside this red blood cell. And what do you think is going to happen to this red blood cell? You guessed it. It's going to get larger. So all of a sudden, this red blood cell is going to get a lot bigger, right? So it's going to get a lot bigger. And what's going to happen here, pretty much in this solution, Right? Depending on how much solute there is, right? So if the solution, right, what's gonna happen is water is, is gonna rush in and there's a possibility that this red blood cell can actually burst. And if it does burst, this is what we call hemolysis. Hemo meaning blood, or the hemoglobin in blood. Lysis means to break. So this red blood cell can burst. Right? And it actually can become actually very fatal to a patient if this, 
you know, if this concentration was any lower than it actually already is. Because all of a sudden, the red blood cell can burst, and if it bursts, right, why is it fatal? Well, these red blood cells, they start to burst in your, in your, in your blood vessels. They can no longer transport oxygen to different body tissues that efficiently, right? And so all of a sudden, you know, this, as we said, can become very, very fatal. But now let's um, take this red blood cell and bring it from this isotonic state into what we call a hypertonic solution. And so what that means is there is more solute here than there is here. Right, so we're going to write it a little bit smaller. So there's very little solute inside the red blood cell. There's a lot more outside. So what's going to happen is whatever water is inside the cell now is going to move outwards. Right? And what's going to happen is this cell or this red blood cell, and we're going to get rid of it. Right? We're going to get rid of it and we're going to redraw it all shriveled up. So all of a sudden, this red blood cell is going to shrivel up, right? And they're gonna form pretty much almost scallop-shaped cells, right? And the thing is, with these types of cells, they have a tendency to clump, right? So these types of cells have a tendency to pretty much clump within blood vessels. Right? And what happens is we can actually clog, right? by clumping, we're going to clog uh, these small veins and arteries, right? Small veins and arteries. Because these uh, red blood cells have pretty much don't allow the movement. And they also prevent oxygen from re reaching blood tissues. Because remember, oxygen needs to diffuse into these red blood cells. And if these red blood cells don't have any space, right? It prevents them from allowing for oxygen to come in. So these red blood cells are going to lose water, right? And what's going to happen is they are going to undergo something called crenation. And crenation is pretty much a condition uh, in which the clumping of cells, right? Uh, because they've been moved, they've been put into a hypertonic solution, um, and that's what really what crenation is. And it prevents, also prevents oxygen from being moved around. And also, as we said, this too can be very, very fatal. So in other words, when we're dealing with IV in the blood, right? The IV in the blood has to be a certain concentration because we want what we call that isotonic state in which the amount of solute to solvent ratio inside and outside of the cell is exactly equal. And as we said, if there's more solute inside the red blood cell, water is going to rush in. If there's more solute outside, water is going to exit the cell. And as we said, solutes suck, right? They suck what? They suck the water inside or out.